everyone welcome back to the next video in this video i will show you how to integrate a c++ static library inside your flutter app and we will do it for uh, android ios as well as a mac os app like i don't have windows and linux and as far as i know uh, this is not possible uh, using uh, this is not possible for web i think we have to use web assembly something like that uh, so yeah let's see how to do this so static library as in i will just create a simple c++ file and um, we will call that c++ code from our dart code so we don't have to like uh, call c++ code from kotlin code and then call that kotlin code from dart code with, with the help of ffi like foreign function interface we can directly call c++ code uh, from our dart code now this is for again for static library the disadvantage of static library is they are loaded when your app loads there is something uh, other there is some other thing called dynamic library which are only loaded once you call it uh, otherwise they are not loaded so but uh, we will be looking into static library in this particular video so uh, like uh, i have created like a practice project as well and here is my fresh newly created flutter project i will be copying a bit of code from practice project because i am not that good in c++ it's very difficult for me to remember the code but i will try to explain as much as i can so let's see how to do this so first uh, what we have to do is uh, we will have to create uh, this ffi folder so i will go to my lib and here i will create an ffi folder okay and here we will have to create our c++ file now uh, most of the uh, tutorials which i saw was using uh, c like using the c programming language but the reason why i'm picking c++ is because it is much more popular as compared to c and there are much more many more libraries in c++ as compared to c okay so that's the only reason why i'm picking c now what what i'll do is that i'll just create one file called uh, you can name it whatever you feel like but i'll name it as native print dot cpp dot cpp means c plus plus and i'll just copy paste this code which i already had okay uh, because i'm not really good in c plus plus here we are marking this with at extern c like from what i have understood is for ffi to work we need to compile our code to c language and that's why we are using this extern c again i could be wrong but from that's what i have understood and here uh, if you see the logic of this here we are basically taking one character so this is our function called hello it takes one uh, string suppose like but not string exactly but a character okay and here i have some other uh, car string like cello but uh, here uh, like i can make it as hello and here whatever you have passed uh, it will append to that particular thing so suppose i passed hello and here i pass world then uh, the output would be hello world okay so that's what we will be looking into uh, again you can change the implementation to whatever you feel like uh, i think chat gpt is great way <laughs> if you are not good in c plus plus next we have to create an uh, dart ffi for this particular c plus plus file <coughs> so first we will have to include the ffi package inside our pubspec.yaml so we will have to add this particular library so i'll copy this i'll go to pubspec.yaml <coughs> and i'll paste it over here i'll click on save it will download the dependency for me so this is done this is done next we have to create this native print dot so i will just create it inside our lib folder outside the ffi folder <coughs> so i'll just name it as native print dot dart and again i'll copy paste all the code because again i'm not really good at this so here we are uh, basically uh, creating a pointer of utf8 for our hello string native and there is another type def for hello string then here like there is uh, one confusion for me like like i'm not really sure why we are using this uh, because we are not creating a dynamic library so i'm even even i'm confused because we didn't create a dot so file i think that is created automatically by cmake so i'm even i'm little confused whether this is static or dynamic uh, okay and here we are just calling hello lib dot lookup 
pass our native function uh, again now you and i am not really good at this so basically what we are doing is that we are calling the hello function which we have defined it inside c plus plus okay and it is a function so that's what all uh, that's the only thing which we are doing uh, i know like this is very difficult to understand even i am struggling with this uh, next uh, for android what we have so that's it for from flutter side uh, only thing is how to call it now to call it uh, i will just copy another piece of code so here as you can see i have displayed this text so i'll just copy this text i will close all i will go to main dot dart of my flutter project and this is the default project which is present right so i'll just copy this okay and here i'll just include this hello function which we have so i'll just import ffi dot dart and as well as we also have to import native print dot dart okay so here you can see i am passing the, i don't require this hello so you can use something like this okay i'll just remove unnecessary interpolation as well so here we are passing world as a string to that hello function which we have created inside c plus plus so basically the output should be hello world all right next what i will do is uh, so firstly how to make it run for android so you will ha have to go to the android folder we will have to create this particular file cmake list.txt okay so go to android uh, just click on this uh, cmake uh, list.txt okay so inside android i have created this file and i'll copy paste this code uh, so firstly we will require cmake install inside your android studio so what i'll do is that i'll quickly open android studio and uh, okay so i think i'll just quickly close this this is not the project which i want to import i'll click on open i'll go to downloads I will go to CPP. I will go to uh, Flutter app, Flutter app. Okay, Android, and I'll open the Android folder. So if I open the Android Studio settings, so this is for Mac. For uh, Windows, it would be a little different. Just uh, play around where this uh, option exactly is. And if you see uh, the HDK, I think it is in Tools or Build Execution let's see when oh uh, yeah android hdk and if you see the hdk tools uh, if i scroll down a little here you can see the ndk is installed so you will have to install one ndk just select whatever is the latest like i have not updated the latest one select the latest whatever is present okay also you will have to select hdk command line and here cmake select any one of the cmake i have selected twice you I have selected two you don't really require two cmakes just select one of the cmakes okay and here you will get the version so mine is 3.22.1 right so that's what i am using over here don't use uh, mine because it might not work for you and here here we are adding one library so this the name is native print and we are just telling where to find the c++ file so it is presented inside the lib folder inside ffi native print.cpp that's what i am doing over here now we will have to make uh, the build.gradle aware about this particular cmake list.txt file uh, so for that again i'll just copy paste some code so flutter at this point of time is still using groovy as their language for gradle files but in future if flutter changes to kotlin as the language for gradle file then this particular code might look a little bit different again you can use chat gpt to convert it but at least for now they are using gradle so we just have to copy paste it and here we are basically telling uh, this is where the cmake file is located so you can use this again the version use whatever version you have installed so i'll just make this a little bit pretty okay so that's it for android now if i want uh, i can directly uh, run it on my android device okay so my android uh, code like it is still doing gradle build so i will just wait for it now uh, i will quickly show it to you for ios so for ios again uh, go to your project ios part is pretty easy so this is our flow okay i'll go to my flutter project i'll just click on uh, ios I will just click on this XC workspace, double click on it, it will open in Xcode for us. 
okay this is taking little bit of time by the meantime i will just run my uh, flutter app on my android device if you want you can use the flutter run command as well but i want to run it on my real android device and i'm using wi-fi debugging that's why i'm running it via uh, android studio okay so once this is ready once the xcode part is ready all you have to do is uh, you have to go to lib and you will have to copy the ffi folder inside your uh, xcode project okay there are two xcode projects opened for me i don't know which one is which i'll close both of this and i will open my ios xc workspace again okay so i will just click on okay i'll just go to lib and here i will just drag and drop this ffi inside this runner but here make sure you uncheck this copy items if needed because uh, whenever we do any changes later on inside the cpp folder that should automatically get reflected inside our ios project we don't have to copy it again and again that's why make sure you uncheck this particular option and just click on finish okay uh, now i will quickly uh, run it for uh, ios as well and quickly show you guys the output uh, so my android output is almost ready i'll show you that first i don't need this i don't need this so here you can see hello world has been displayed so that's it for android output uh, again you can change it to whatever you feel like uh, mac os part is very similar to ios again you just have to open the uh, mac os folder so inside mac os just open the xc workspace and again you just have to drag and drop the ffi folder which you have inside your uh, runner part and then just run for mac os i will not show the output for mac os but i'll just quickly show you just get this ffi and drag and drop inside the runner path and again make sure you uncheck this copy items if needed and just click on finish and it will do everything for you okay uh, so that's it for mac os i'll quickly show you the ios output as well so here is the ios app running so hopefully it should display as the output okay sorry about this this is taking little bit of time and i don't want to do editing part okay here you can see uh, the output has been displayed so yeah that's it thank you for watching bye